It's time to go on another wonderful Italian wine adventure, Carmela. Are we going to Sicily? Oh, no, no, no. We're going back to Piedmont. Oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah, home of the majestic Barolo and Barbaresco wines. Oh, are we going to drink Barolo? Well, we're going to go and visit Barolo's baby brother. Oh, it's got a baby brother? Yeah. Oh, cute. How about that? <laughs> I love it. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Wine Pair Podcast. I'm Joe, your sommelier of a reasonably priced wine, and this is my wife and my wine pairing partner in crime, Carmela. Hi there. And we are the Wine Pair. Hooray! All right. Okay, a quick orientation. For those of you who may be new to the podcast, in each episode, what we do is we learn about, and we taste and we review three wines that are reasonably priced, which means, Carmela... $20 $20 or less. Yep, and should be easy for you to find, and our goal is to have some fun, mm-hmm. learn about some new wines, mm-hmm. talk about wines in a way that regular people like us can understand, mm-hmm. and we are proud to say that we are officially recommended by the editors of Decanter Magazine. I always say it Whoa! in some weird accent. I know, I don't know who, who why. Who call us fun, irreverent, chatty, and entertaining. Mm-hmm. I think that's so nice. It's so nice. Okay, Carmela, it's been a couple of months, but like the second season of The White Lotus, oh my. we are going to take another Italian wine adventure. Oh God, I am really not ready for that kind of adventure. <laughs> no, we're not. We're not going to Sicily, and I'm not going to give anything away, but there's there's dead bodies. Oh, anyway, my goodness. Anyway, and this time, we are kind of going back to the beginning of, of my wine journey altogether in mm. talking about Nebbiolo, which is a red wine that is generally considered to be the most prestigious, prestigious, I said prestigious, but it's prestigious wine in Italy from the most noble grape in Italy. Mm. So what do you think of that? That's exciting. Yeah. And do you think they drank any Nebbiolo in Sicily in the White Lotus? Um, They drank a lot of wine, so yeah. perhaps they did. I don't think they did, actually. Can we find this out? Well, they did go on a wine tasting, but... but I, they were on several. Yeah, but they were in Sicily, so true, they're not going to have, unless they're growing Nebbiolo. I feel like Nebbiolo they drank down. a lot of white wine. Okay, but you know, last week I said they drank a lot, and you were like, "Ew, I don't know." They drink so much. No, they drink a ton. But then I was saying they're probably not drinking wine because they're actors. No, you're right. It's not <laughs> real wine. Okay, so Carmela, yeah. are you ready for story time? Yeah, it's time I for love story, a good story time. Okay, you know, you know, because you know mm-hmm. uh, that my introduction to wine came through who? My father. That's right. Your Once father. Once upon a time. Once upon a time. Now, many, for all of many, you, many, 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 no, many years like five ago. years ago. <laughs> now, for all of you out there in listening land, you might be surprised to find out that in my family, particularly my mom's side of the family, there just was not a lot of alcohol drinking. No, right? I don't. Yeah, everybody said oh, it gives them a headache. And yeah, they, exactly. You know, yeah. Now, it was a little different on my dad's side, but still, I, I would not say, you know, for me, Carmela, that I was exposed to a, a ton of drinking growing well, up. Well, both sides made wine, though. Well, right? that's the funny thing. So and my mom, my mom is really does never drinks. No. N- not even a little bit. No. Have you ever yet. seen her drink anything? No. She's right. never, ever been interested. Not even Aunt Agata would have a glass Well, that's what of I was going to say. Um, she had two two siblings, Uncle John and Aunt Agata, and they imbibed a little she bit. She didn't have two siblings. She that, had... that imbibed. Oh, I'm sorry. She had five thought, wow, siblings. What, what happened but she had to the other two. Ones? Well, they, they didn't. Uncle <laughs> Tolly would have a, a beer every once in a while. Oh. But, but Uncle John and Aunt Agata, Aunt Agata liked her white wine. Yes. She'd like a, a nice. Yes glass of white wine and it's not like it's i don't think my family was against drinking they just didn't drink and like you said it is weird because our grandparent my grandparents on both sides even my mom's dad made wine we have his still in our basement oh which you love God. that um Jeez, that where that he made grappa and so all my storage space <laughs> no i knew I, I wrote down in my notes you don't like it <laughs> no okay. It's not that I don't like it. It's no. just big. It's, it's big. big. It's it's a big and it just copper sits there. still that we don't do anything it's with. It's still, not like we're making. It's very, very, it's very still, still and it's still there. <laughs> yeah, it's not. We're not making grappa it's not with moving. it. Not moving. And okay. Yeah. When we first got married, for those of you, this is the third time I'm saying this. For those <laughs> of you out there in listening land, you just won't see the. You won't hear the edits. I had almost no experience with wine and and mm-hmm. like no knowledge at all about how broad wine, you know, like the wine world is or the types of wines. I mean, I wasn't just a novice. I was like an ignoramus. I well, didn't know anything. No, but you did buy the, the what was it, the sparkling, what is that, Tostis? Osti Spumanti. No, Osti, but also 
Tosty spoon. Oh, I thought there was another name. Like yeah. Tosty. Yeah. Tosty. I think you've tosty your cookies. Okay. Now you're just totally ruining the story. Let me tell the story. So now your dad is a wine lover and a wine collector and kind of a wine nut. Right. Kind of a kind wine of a nut? nerd, yeah. like you like to say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And by the time we got married, he was very much into Italian wine. Yes. So he did drink uh, French wines early on, but then had moved to Italian wines. And, and his dad mm-hmm. had actually become a wine and beer distributor. So there was you know a lot of wine Alcohol. around a lot of wine around <laughs> a lot of wines from italy but also you know california and all over the place right, right. now well, your dad got really into italian wines and so for those of you out there in listening land who may not know chianti or prosecco are not considered the kings of italian wine what? so just you're right but mm-hmm. the wine that is is barolo and it has a next of kin called Barbaresco. And these are often the most expensive and highest revered Italian wines. And mm-hmm. I would not say that they're necessarily hard to find, mm-hmm. but they are hard to afford. Exactly. Yeah. I was, was wondering if you'd bring that part up. Yeah. So basically on this podcast, because our wines are supposed to be under $20, we will never do a Barolo or Barbaresco. No. I, d- I doubt we will ever do it. I mean, some are a hundred bucks like out of the game. And that's sometimes not a bad price. No, exactly. So, so these are the wines though, the Barolo and the Barbaresco that I started drinking. And like, that's kind of fun. Uh, like that was my, that? Int- I know how my introduction. Lucky. Yeah. Wow. Because they're the wines that your dad drank. And he also drank things like Chianti and Amarone and Brunello and Montepulciano and Alianico and Primitivo and all those. And but the nice thing was, is that you enjoyed all of them. And because, I didn't have to pay for them. <laughs> well, right. And his daughter, me. Yeah. We, I wasn't as crazy for them. Like when he what was. What does that mean? Well, I was Why crazy it, for that you. That made me enjoy it more? No, no, but it was good for my like dad. It? it was nice oh, for my dad I get what that you said. came into like family okay. and he was like, he could share that with and you. I and I actually liked and wines. And liked it. Yeah, yeah, and wanted to learn more. You're exactly. right. Exactly. But the, the biggest deals, though, like were not all those wines. Like he would serve those kind of on a regular basis, but the big deal on a special occasion was a Barolo or a Barbaresco. That was right, a big deal. It's right. becoming more and more common now because your dad's got a ton and he's getting older and he's like, I got to drink these wines, which is extra fun, right. actually. So good for him. Now, the grape that Barolo and Barbaresco are made from is called again what, Carmela? Nebbiolo. That's right. Wow. Are <laughs> and you so again, that I again, knew be, that one right away? Yeah. You, the pause, Not even that the, the, right the, the, the pregnant pause yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, so even though we can, we will never probably do a Barolo or Barbaresco on this podcast, we can do a Nebbiolo. I love it. Just a plain nice. old Nebbiolo. Yeah. Plain and, old. That's not the way to introduce no, it. No, but, but I just mean it. They're not. Plain and old we'll t- Nebbiolo. Yeah. <laughs> they're boring. No. <laughs> we'll talk about why they're just plain old Nebbiolos and not Barolos and Barbaresco. Okay. There's reasons for that. So again, in our Italian wine adventure today, we're going to be learning about and tasting and reviewing the Longhe Nebbiolo. Wow. And we're going to introduce all of you out there in listening land who may not be familiar what it is. My favorite wine, either it, between Pinot Noir and this, it's my favorite wine. Oh, like, wow. Yeah. So, so sometimes exciting. sometimes they duke it out, right? right, right. Okay. But Pinot any, Noir kind of came into the picture a little bit later. later. Definitely yes. later. And it's I something never, that we kind of agree on. Uh, we, we agree <laughs> on very little, ladies and gentlemen, but <laughs> we do God, agree, we on agree on Pinot, Pinot Noir. Noir. <laughs> so I say we get to it, Carmela. Okay, I'm ready. But first. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got to do. Our shameless plug. That's right. If you are finding that you are enjoying what you are hearing more than you thought you could ever enjoy anything your in your mind life, is blown. we think it would be fantastico <sighs> if you would subscribe to our podcast. And we would also be cosi grato if you would leave us a nice <laughs> rating and review on our website or on your podcast service so that people who are searching around will see our ratings and say merd. Bravo. <laughs> Brava. Or merd. Shit. Wait, wait. I should I should I should that's, sign up for this that's podcast. Not, oh. That's French. I no, actually it's Italian, it's Italian too. Italian? Yeah, yeah. It is. It oh, is. See, I don't swear, so I would not don't know. actually. I actually for know. those of you who still may be new to the podcast, Carmela will uh, almost never ever swear ever. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm mad not at saying, the bank. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. That's the only or me. Those no? are the only times. The other day she did let out a little JC and I was like, "What?" It was I think it was watching White Lotus. <laughs> oh, well, because it was deserving of that. I mean, God, it'll, I'm surprised it didn't. It ask actually left me speechless. <laughs> <laughs> did, did. No, okay, so you can also reach out to us or follow us on Instagram at the White Wine Pair Podcast. <laughs> the White 
<laughs> Jesus criminy. <laughs> at the Wine Pair Podcast or on Counter Social or contact us on our website, thewinepairpodcast.com. And as we do every week, we'll tell you someone we think you should tell about the Wine Pair Podcast. And this week, we think you should tell anyone who thinks that the only wines from Italy are Chianti or Prosecco. Hey, that's a great idea. Yeah, because, you know, those are the most common ones. Oh, and people will basically look at us and go, oh, would you like a glass of Chianti? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, what? Yeah, you are Italian. That must be what you Chianti, drink all the you time. Want, yeah. yeah. And the straw bottles and right. all that kind oh of stuff. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah that's no, not don't, good. Don't do that to us. Right. We like a good Chianti. Sure. But we don't drink it. We actually it's not like we have it. A, it's not like we have a tap, like a tap. Should you know, we like, do that? By the sink? Oh, my God. The Chianti <gasps> tap? That would be no, kind of fun. No, it Chianti. We could do a different something, something every we would, week. That would be really dangerous. Oh, my Okay. Gosh. Can we get back to the topic? Yes, okay. So, as I mentioned, Nebbiolo is a grape grown almost almost exclusively in Italy and almost exclusively in the Piedmont, or if you're in Italy, the Piemonte area. Although there is a teeny tiny bit being grown in the U.S. and some other countries like South mm. Africa and Australia and South America, but it really, it's a Piedmont grape. And so if you are if you don't know where Piedmont is, if you picture Italy as a boot, Piedmont is at the top of the boot, mm-hmm. like the knee of the, you know, where the knee, the boot would go over your kneecap or something. Wow, That's kind of where really it is. really north, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, Super duper north. Yeah, and it's on the west side of Italy, the most famous famous city is Turin or Torino and to the west of Piedmont is France to the east is Milan to the south is Genoa and parts of northern Piedmont actually border on Switzerland so there wow. you go right wow. and now within so Piedmont So you think it'd be pretty accessible uh what do you mean well, just that if, you know, like a lot of people would know about it, but some people, a lot of people don't seem to know about it. About the wine? Yeah. Well. Because I, if it's bordering all those areas. I, yeah, this goes back to some, this is totally off script, but this is mm-hmm. something we've talked about before. I think. What script, by the way? The one that I'm reading. <laughs> but no, but it's because a lot of the wines that we get in the United States are French based, like mm-hmm. Cabernet Sauvignon, mm-hmm. Pinot Noir, Chardonnay. Those are French-based wines. There aren't as many uh, Italian ba- even though there's tons and tons of grapes. I think Italy grows more grapes than uh, wine grapes than France. Mm. Most of the wine grapes that are grown in the United States and a lot of other countries are a French origin. Right. And so I think mm. that's why people don't know it as well because they're not familiar with the grape Nebbiolo. Right. Huh. Interesting. Now, <clears throat> let's get back to the story. Okay. You keep it's like white lotus. You keep taking me off in oh a different my direction. Oh goodness. Okay. Now, Nebbiolo is grown in many different areas of Piedmont and believe it or not there are 42 separate DOC or they call these designated controlled regions in Piedmont and 17 DOCGs which is the highest designation. So there's mm. you know there's 59 designations for Nebbiolo just in Piedmont. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Yeah. Wow. So when uh, Nebbiolo is made in the Barolo and Barbaresco areas of Piedmont into a wine, it's known mm. by those names, Barolo and Barbaresco, as long as it's made in the specific way, uh, not by the name of the grape. In other areas, it'll be called Nebbiolo, mm. right? Mm-hmm. So that's a little bit confusing. Mm. Outside of the areas of Barolo and Barbaresco, there are several wines like Nebbiolo Longue that are made from Nebbiolo and are from a specific area of Piedmont, so the Longue area. And mm. actually, technically, Barolo and Barbaresco are in the Longue region, but they're just they're specific villages and the specific areas, and they make the wines in a specific way. And outside of Longue, some of the other areas that grow Nebbiolo are Roero, Geme, Gatinara, don't worry about memorizing wow, all this. Wow. You can just go to our memorizing. show notes, go to Holy our website, cow. thewinepairpodcast.com, look for the show, go to the show notes. We have links and all that kind of stuff. Oh. But getting back to Longue Nebbiolo, the difference between Barolo and Barbaresco and a regular old Longue Nebbiolo has to do with two main things, Carmela. Hmm. One of them is Tewa, which is what? The ground? Yeah, Tewa is the specific vineyards, the soil, the terrain, right? And those are that's one of the things that makes Barolo and Barbaresco unique and the ways that the wines are made. So th- actually making a Barolo or Barbaresco is kind of a pain in the ass. Mm. I'm just going to say that. So we talked about this when we were kind of preparing the difference between we making... We're not preparing. Okay, well, we <laughs> talked about it a little bit. Okay. But we were talking, because you make cakes, you have your baby cakes business, and you make cakes, and I was like, oh. making a Barolo and Barbaresco is harder than making a Nebbiolo, even though they're made from the same ingredients. Right. So, let, what is a... I think you said, like, a chocolate cake and a chocolate souffle is a good example, because they're both chocolate cakes, but right. one's just much harder to make. What does that mean? I don't know. What You tell me. Well, it's not, not, it's not typically, like, about the ingredients, necessarily, but it's about the process, right? And so... What makes the process of a souffle so much different than a regular chocolate cake? Well, some of it's just cooking it at the right temperature, taking it out at the right time. Oftentimes, a souffle, I 
think has less flour, mm-hmm. so there's a little bit with you know maybe the rising. I don't. It's trickier, I'd have to look. probably it's trickier, trickier to make. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it and is you have to make to it just right. One like if you're looking at a chocolate cake, it's the That's most hard. yeah. And you have to make it just right, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's kind of similar to be a Barolo or Barbaresco. Hmm. So not only does it have to be from that specific area, but it has to spend at least 38 months aging prior to being sold. And 18 of those months have to be in a barrel. Hmm. So that's a long time. 38 months is a long time. And if a wine is going to be given the title of a Barolo Reserva, which sometimes they do, it has to be aged for 62 months. Oh my goodness. So that's goodness. a really long time. Yes. And then, on top of that, the general rule is these wines, these Barolos and Barbarescos, need to age at least 10 years before they should be drunk. That's kind of like the rule of thumb. Like, don't drink a Barolo or a Barbaresco younger than 10 years old because it's not going to be ready. And by the way, I see it on Instagram all the time. These people, they're open them Barolos. They're like five years old. You're, wa- you're wasting it. You got to wait a a little bit longer. Ooh. Now, a Longe Nebbiolo is considered kind of the little brother or cousin of Barolo or Barbaresco, and it can have a lot of the same characteristics of those wines, but the rules for making it are much more relaxed. There are still rules around it, but they're just much more relaxed. There are no specific aging requirements. They tend to spend less time on, on oak, and they tend to be aged in large oak casks rather than small barrels of bariques that Barolo and Barbaresco are. So Nebbiolo wines can usually be drunk much earlier than Barbaresco and Barolo, uh, although I would still suggest to wait like four or five years before you drink them. And it's not uncommon that makers of Barolo or Barbaresco will have a just a plain old Nebbiolo that they sell as well. And actually, some of the wines that we're drinking today, their producers do make Barolos and hmm. Barbaresco. So hmm. that's kind of unique. So, But there are a few things that we would expect in both wines. The smell of what, Carmela? The smell of tar and roses. That's right. That's the classic Barolo descriptor. They also are high in tannin, but also high in acidity. They're pretty big bodied, and they're also high in alcohol. And again, these are wines that should be opened up before you drink them, both both of them. So we opened them up about a half an hour ago, and they could probably use some decanting. And they're big wines, but they aren't like kind of big wines like California big cab wines. They're not like kind of punch you in the face kind of wine. So it's a little bit, I would say it's a little bit more of an elegant wine. Maybe it's a wine that has some some class to it. Maybe it has some old money to it. Maybe like an wow. old, you know, like an old building. I don't know what I'm talking oh about. Oh my right goodness. Now. Okay. And it is a food wine. It's definitely mm. a food wine. So that's for sure. So should we talk about some of the wines that we chose today we kind should. Of on this little adventure? Okay, let's do it. So as usual, all the wines we've chosen for this episode are under $20, but I will say that there are these wines are closer to $20 than some of the other ones. So in some episodes, we've had wines that are much lower than $20. These are kind of like near or there, like $20. And we got we, these wines kind of all over the place. So you can find Nebbiolo in a lot of places. We got one of the wines at Total Wine. We got one of the wines at wine.com and we got one of the wines just at a grocery store. So they should be hmm. relatively easy to find. And so, and, and again, this happens all the time. You may not be able to find the particular wines that we're drinking tonight, although you can, uh, but you will be able to find Nebbiolo. It's not a really, I think at most wine shops, you can find them at a big supermarket or one with a good wine selection. You should be able to find a Nebbiolo. And again, Note that we are drinking tonight, Carmela, Lange Nebbiolo wines, but sometimes you may be able to find other Nebbiolos like Nebbiolo d'Alba. So hmm. there's other ones. So it's the same grape, but it's from a different region, a different DOC, whatever, in Italy. So, and then I also want to say that unlike most of our other wines, finding out information about these specific wines was really hard. And I'm not hmm. sure why that is, because I don't think that they're like unusual. It's just like two of them didn't even have websites, you know, huh. like the, I, I couldn't find anything about them. And so we had to rely on some like third party sources and stuff. So that was a little bit frustrating. That's not totally usual. Uh, I, and I just look, I kind of a nerd. So I kind of like to understand some of the, you know, like I want to, I want to research a little bit. Sure. You know, so anyway. Okay. So the first one that we're trying today is one that I got at the grocery store. Nice. I think I got it. Where did I I look this up? Yeah, we got it. The thrift way. Oh, which thrift way? The thrift way on Vashon. That's that's our thrift way. Yeah. And it's called Lange Nebbiolo Ka Giala. And the winemaker is named Marco Porello. I, I don't know who he is or anything, but I just like his name. 
Marco, like these names, Marco Polo. Perello. That's right. Marco Polo. That's right. Like Marco Polo. And he makes a, Bar- like I said, he makes a Barolo as well. He also makes a Barbera d'Alba. Um, and this was, this will be our lowest cost wine of the night. And this winemaker makes his wines naturally with no oh. pesticides and no herbicides. And he's working on an organic certification. Nice. So how about that? Good for him. I, I don't know what the rules are in Italy to get an organic certification, but he's working on it. Okay. Uh, and again, it, it was hard to find out too much about this wine or the winemaker other than from some retail sites. And again, they don't have a website. I couldn't find any reviews. So this wine is a mystery. Mm, I like a mystery. Yeah, we're going to, it's like the ending of White Lotus. Oh. We can't even, t- if you haven't seen it, I don't even want to let it, I don't even want to let anything out because you, you just, just have to see it, it from the start to end to right, really get right. it. Yeah, okay. Our second wine is called La Sacristia Lange Nebbiolo, and it is a winery direct wine from Total Wine. Now, I'm not a super big fan of this. This is something that Total Wine does. So if you go to Total Wine, you'll notice that they have all these wines. A lot of their wines say winery direct. What that probably means, I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure that it means they have some sort of like agreement with the winery or the winemaker, hmm. probably get some deal on it. And so I'm just, I'm but not they always... have to note that, huh? Yeah, well, they do. And they kind of make it, try to make it like it's a big deal. Like, oh, these are winery direct wines. But I, I mean, I think if you're a big shot winemaker, I don't think you're going to say, yeah, well, total wine, will you distribute my wine? I think it's for like second tier. Hmm, but so this why, is a wine direct. This is a winery direct wine. But okay. you know what? We're not going to prejudge it. We're going to we're going to we're going to see what it's really like. What made you get it? Well, because it was there. Okay. You know, part, part of it's a really good question, because part of what I like to do is I just think, you know, normal people just go out and a lot of times they just go to a wine shop and what they do is they just or, you know, or a grocery store and they're like, oh, that bottle looks interesting or uh. so like, I think part of the reason why I chose this wine was just that it was hmm. like, oh, I'm in total wine. I'm looking for some wines. I want I knew I we wanted to do an episode of Nebbiolo. And so I just kind of picked it up. Mm. Because I think that's what normal people do. Well, what are we, abnormal? We, I think we are abnormal. <laughs> there aren't a lot of people that have wine podcasts. <laughs> I think we're weird. Uh-huh. I think we're weird. But you know what I'm getting at? Yes. So yeah. that's why I picked you were it trying up. To, you were like walking in somebody else's shoes. What would the normal, what would normal people who aren't weird, what would they do? They would <laughs> pick up that wine, <laughs> right? We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Now, this winemaker also makes a couple of Barolos, which Total Wine sells for like 60 bucks. Mm-hmm. So, you know, mm-hmm. not cheap. They have another one that's like 40 bucks. And I don't know. That's about all I know about them other than James Suckling gave the wine a 90. Ah. Big wood. Surprise. Yeah, surprise. Wow. Yeah. Can you believe it? He gave the wine a 90. I know, weird. That's so odd. Weird. Okay, so the third wine is called Villadoria Brico Magno Lange Nebbiolo. And this wine, Carmela, had hmm. some information on it. At nice. least some information about the winery on wine.com. So we got this one at wine.com. And by the way, Brico in Piedmont means the top of a hill. And Lange also means hill. It means huh. a hill. So that's kind of interesting. So mm-hmm. a lot of hills. My goodness, know. very hilly. Hilly? What the hill? I don't know. Okay. Uh, so now this winery is run by the daughter of the original owner, and her name is, and I like, I just like saying the name, Paula Lanzavecchia. Ooh. That's just kind of fun to say, Lanzavecchia. Pa- the old, the old Paula. The old Lanza. No, Lanzavecchia. Paula Lan- Lanzavecchia. Lanzavecchia. The old Lanza. <laughs> oh my know. God. That's a long last name. I guess. Yeah. Mm. So anyway, she is also using more sustainable farming. She doesn't use pesticides. She doesn't use chemical fertilizers. She's mm. modernizing the uh, equipment at the winery. All this kind of fun stuff. So that was kind of, that was kind of interesting. So, uh, and I love this description that is on wine.com. I, this is interesting. So I'm just going to read it. Her wines are the new bridge in the sense that they are softer, more elegant with integrated tannins, yet still uphold the iron fist inside a velvet glove tradition of what makes Piedmont wines the most mis- prestigious of Italy. And I, I like that description of a vel- an iron fist inside mm. a velvet glove. Yes. It's like firm, but like there's softness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah like, kind of the way we parent. Exactly. <laughs> and it's like, if I'm going to get punched, I want to be punched by an iron, iron fist in a velvet no. glove. No. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> Why would you? I don't even know. I think it'll hurt regardless Actually, of the velvet. When I think glove. of iron fist inside a velvet glove, I kind of think of you, Carmela. What? Yeah, a little bit hard on the out on the inside, but soft on the outside. What? Are yeah. you I don't think yeah. that's anything There's, like me. She seems super nice, ladies and gentlemen. But trust me, she seems there's an iron fist <laughs> inside that velvet glove. Again, it's a mystery. Woo! 
Okay, now they suggest that you let this wine age for a couple of years, and uh, and they also suggest to open the bottles an hour before serving. So we did some of that. We mm-hmm. didn't let it age that long, but we did let them open up. Not quite an hour, but we'll be close. And again, I think that's an underrated recommendation for rich red wines like this. You got to let them breathe. Um, I also have a link to their website in our show notes, and they have lots of cool information there and, and links and all sorts of fun stuff and information. Information, hooray! So I think that's kind of fun. So, so what do you think? It all sounds very interesting. I feel like I've talked a lot. Keep talking. Well, I'm listening. I feel like I've over-talked a little bit. No. Are you upset that I've talked so much? You're just a talker. Again, the chatty side of things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But during White Lotus, I'm quiet. Well, we both are. No. What are you going to say? Actually, we're not quiet. We are constantly commenting. Oh, my God. Can you believe that happened? Oh. <laughs> you know, look, people... I, we are not we are not uh, series TV watchers. No, we're but, not good at it. But we we blew through White Lotus both seasons. We loved it. Yes. So well, we, I don't know if we loved it. We were just very it's so intriguing. intriguing. Yeah. Wow. We are on the same page. Yes. Intriguing. All right. So what do you say? Let's take a break and let's try our first wine. Okay. All right. <laughs> Okay, we are back, and we are ready to try our first wine. Uh, I'll explain it while, Carmela, you smell it. This is the Ca Gialla Lange Nebbiolo. It's from Piedmont, Italy. The producer, as far as I know, is Ca Gialla. This is a 2020, so it's still a little young. It was only $13.49 at Thriftway. Uh, 14% alcohol, and as far as I know, 100% Nebbiolo. And I don't have a professional rating for it, but we're going to give it our own rating. What are you smelling, Carmela? So it's still young, huh? It's young. Yeah. Why did we? Why are we going for something this young? Because again, I think this is what you know. This is normal, normal people, see an average and, person. Hmm. It's ready. It's on the shelf, ready to you know. Like I think people will drink it, and you can drink these wines a little bit younger. And we did open them up. That's the other thing is I would suggest that you, if you're going to drink one of these wines, a Nebbiolo, a little younger, let it open up. Hmm. Yeah. It's pretty too. It's it's it light. Is. It's lighter colored than I would expect. Yeah, it is lighter. It is. It's very pretty. Yeah. Um, it's almost pinot colored. I think. Mm-hmm. It smells kind of alcoholic to me, kind of hot. Hmm. I think it's got that kind of Nebbiolo smell to it. Hmm. I smell. Um, it's got a little heat to it, but I smell some of that, like wood and tar mm-hmm. and and tobacco a little bit. Yeah, maybe. a little tobacco, cherry for sure. Like I'm smelling cherries, like like dark mm-hmm, cherries. Mm-hmm. It's nice. It's got a. I think it's got a really pleasant smell to it. It's kind of that. It's it's pretty rich. It's got a nice yes. rich smell to it. Yeah, it's definitely something you're more familiar with. I don't I don't drink these no, as often. You don't. Mm-mm. No, you don't really. Should we try it? Sure. Let's see what we think. Ooh, it's fruity. It is pretty fruity. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. I, it's really young. I, I think it's really young. Mm. It's got what what fruit? Do you is it cherry? I think or it's is kind it, of cherry. Or is it um, raspberry? Oh, I don't is know. It, what do you? I mean, it's pretty. It's like kind of a tart fruit a little bit. Hmm. Um. I'm getting more, I think I'm getting more cherry or even like plum. Okay. I can see I plum. I know. It's nice. I think it's really nice. I think it's got really nice flavor. It's got a lot of richness to it. So you think, but what would happen in a couple of years? I think it would just mellow out a little bit. It's a little sharp. Yeah. Like so I think there's a little sharpness little on edge. it. Even like when you smell it, it almost makes you want to cough a little I, bit. And like I that. think, I'm sorry. No, just that because it, it's like, it shows like it's strong. Yeah. And I think that alcoholy kind of. It's got a little alcoholic flavor, a little alcoholic smell. Mm-hmm. I think after a couple of years, those things just sort of mellow out mm-hmm. in the wines. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's got great acid, but it's a lot. I mean, it's kind of a lot. Uh, it, it's sharp. It, yes. I would just say it's kind of a sharp wine. It hasn't mellowed out yet. And so I think that I think decant it, let it sit out helps, but I think it needs more time. Mm-hmm. Ooh, but I do think you would want to eat with this. Yeah. Too. What would you eat with it? Well, I think it could stand up to a lot, actually, because it is so strong. Um, I would think that you could do like a nice tomato sauce with yeah, it, like a bon jay sure, or something sure. rich like that. For sure. Or even like a like a, a meat sauce that's been sitting all day. I'm thinking about like my grandpa's meat sauce. Oh, yeah. With meatballs mm-hmm, and the sausage mm-hmm. and the, you know, a like a meat pizza, like Ooh. a big meaty pizza yeah. would taste really good. Yes. I what think- else? Grilled like grilled meats, grilled red meats. I think would, I think it's a, I think it's a red meat wine. I don't really feel like it's a. I think you could do like a grilled chicken or grilled, but I, but it's it's gonna, it's a lot. Like yes. it's a lot to. I mean, I think it would again taste really good with food, uh, mm-hmm. but I think it's got to be able to kind of match that. And I think 
like cheeses that would do really well, like strong, sharp, nice and strong, strong cheese. cheeses, yeah. cheddar cheeses, and those kinds of things. A mm-hmm. pecorino, like something, you know, like that's why a tomato sauce with some sharp cheese on it would be really a little nice romano. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, yeah. this too though could go well. Like it's funny how we a lot of times we like the white wines with a charcuterie, you know, yeah. just. A, yeah. But I think this could go really well with some nice salamis and I still totally, pasta. Totally and agree. Sharp cheeses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lunch, um, like not lunch meats, but the deli <laughs> meats. Lunch yeah, no, that's with my sandwich at noon. <laughs> Actually, would go really good with a nice ham oh, sandwich. Like no. a panini. Yeah, oh, a panini would be really yes, good. A panini would be Ooh, good. A, a nice yeah. calzone. Ooh, mm. yeah. Calzone Meat would be really good. Calzone. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Lasagna. Wow. Little lasagna wow. would be real good. What about, no. a, what about a chicken parm? I mean, chicken and uh, white meat. Yeah, I, it could do okay, but I, I just think it's pretty strong. Like, it's, yeah. there's a lot what going on. What about an eggplant? On. Okay. What about everything? <laughs> How about that? How about that? No, I think so. Sure. <laughs> okay. Should we rate it? Should we just rate this wine? Sure. Okay. What are you going to give so, it? Well, a lot, uh, as a reminder to our friends out there in listening land on our rating scale, we rate on a scale of one to 10, where seven and above means that, hey, we'd buy this wine. Hey, why not say, hey, <laughs> hey. hey, we'd wine the, buy this wine. And four and below means, hey. We're probably going to pour it down the sink. Mm. And in between a five or six means it's pretty good. We're going to drink it, but we might look for something else as well. So I think I'm definitely out. of. I'm going to start low Mm. right out of the gate, but I'm giving it a seven. Okay. For sure. I'm giving a seven. I really kind of want to grade it higher. Maybe we'll see what these other ones are like. But look, it to me, it hits all the it hits all the marks. Mm. It's got good flavor. It's got good you know, like acidity to it. It's got good smell. It's pleasant. It's going to go well with food. It's got a lot going for it. I really, I'm I'm really liking this wine. Mm -hmm. I know this isn't quite your style, so I'm curious what you're going to rate it. Well, I do want to see what the other ones are like because I I would drink this and enjoy it and not have a problem with it. Yeah, I would. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 No, but I'm just not, I'm trying to gauge whether, you know, if I'm buying it for myself, I'm probably not going to get it. No, 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 hey, no, you gave no, a whole no. dissertation a minute ago. Yeah, about but I was you... really talking about what the rating scale yeah. was. No, what do you mean? No, you weren't. You were saying, you know, what you thought. No, so boy. I think, I think for, right now I'm going to give it a six. Oh, just I, because I, I kind of knew see. it. I kind of knew you were going to give it a six. I just want to see what the other ones are like. I'm telling you, this my seven is a strong seven. Oh, I'm, I'm probably going to go higher. We're going to see. Okay, well, let's take a break and uh, clean out our glasses and try our next wine. Okay. Okay, we are back and we're ready to try our next wine. Now, this one poured a little bit darker. It's still lighter. Yes. And Carmel and I were talking about this. A lot of times when we're drinking with your parents, we're drinking these <clears throat> Nebbiolo wines that are 10, 12, 15 years old, and, and the color changes. Mm-hmm. This one's still a little bit lighter, but it's darker it for darker sure than, the, than last yeah. one. And it, but it almost it has a, I don't know, mine looks almost like a little bit of like brown tint yeah to it. you know and so i'm smelling a little funk on this mm. and i'm almost wondering if it's been oxidized a little bit because that mm. coloring too is a little, a little bit off. off yeah so what do you because i'm smelling a little must i'm Can smelling you, a little like well gr- a little bit of grandpa's basement in there Ooh, yeah a little bit or just you know what i don't know it kind of smells like i better talk about this one first but okay, what do you no, think it talk smells about like it, talk about it. What, what were you gonna say just well i was saying say like charcoal or something oh like interesting some, that's something you know like fire like that's been put out oh that's interesting i like that i don't know okay so this one is la sacristia lange nebbiolo this is from also piedmont italy uh the producer as far as i can tell is la sacristia this is a 2017 so this is right in the this should be in the pocket of being ready to drink mm-hmm. it was 17 dollars 99 cents at total wine so a little bit on the higher side, 14% alcohol, 100% Nebbiolo, and James Azacalengo gave it a... Wow. Is that gu- his guess what he gave it? Gave, guess what he gave it? Ding, 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 ding. A 90. Hey, there you go. Okay. So, yeah, hmm. I'm not getting a ton of fruit. No. Maybe some cherry on there, a little bit, like a dark cherry. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting a little bit of fire or something. You know, as I smell a little bit more, though, I almost am smelling... I got a swirl a little bit but maybe a little licorice like a little red licorice Mm, in there okay Mm, it's vegetal though it's got some like vegetal notes it's all earthier maybe yeah let's try it i'm not sure Hmm. it actually tastes way better than it smells i I think so too doesn't taste really at all like it's got a little funk on the back end it's got a little funk on the back end 
but it's mm. not bad. It's like uh, your parents would say it's got character. You know, it's yeah. like, this is, this is what it's supposed to taste like. Yeah. It tastes a little like like foot, hmm. you know? Oh, God. <laughs> I don't think so. Do you really think so? I don't know about that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's taste. Old sock. <laughs> old sock. It's got a dirty little sock. Dirty sock on mm-hmm. it. Uh, mm, I love a dirty your, sock. Coming out of a nice leather shoe. Oh, God. Oh, leather. A little mm-hmm. bit of leather. There is a little leather on this, for sure. Actually, now when you smell it again, you can smell the leather. Yeah, for sure leather. 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and I think that smoke, uh, this is more of like a match than a tobacco, I think. Yes. But you're right. Ooh, and it's a lot of tannins on it. A lot of tannin. It really Ooh. dries out your mouth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is actually, I would say it's actually probably still a little young, even though it's a 2017. Mm. I think it could, I think it's just kind of getting in the pocket. Interesting, and like, yeah. Hasn't quite mellowed out yet. I think unlike a traditional Barolo or Barbaresco, as it mellows out, it'll probably become a little bit less and less flavorful, hmm. but it will be smooth. Like in a couple more years, this thing would be smooth. That's like what a, I would like to t- mm-hmm, taste mm-hmm. in this. Because this yeah. one still has a little bit of sharpness on it. Right, right. Still got a, I mean, look, when you, Barolo and Barbaresco are not for the faint of heart, but right, they are they're not. Big. They're big, but they're big in a different, like I was saying. Right, they're smooth. You're, is that what you're saying? The differences? Or? Well, they're just, they're not a Cabernet, California Cabernet with a ton of oak and a ton of fat flavor. They're just, they're different than that. They're big, but they're big in just a like, a stronger alcoholy kind of way. Hmm. I don't know how to express it. I really think you kind of have to take a big California cab and a good Barolo and put them like side by side and taste them. And you'll kind of see some of the similarities and differences. Hmm. It's a little bit more. I think a Barolo is a little bit more Pinot like actually oh, uh, in, yeah. in some ways. Hmm. But I I like it. Yeah, I don't mind. I actually like it too. But I don't know if I, I see that's why it was good for me to try this one too. I don't know if I, would prefer it to the first one, though. Uh, well, this one uh, is interesting to me because I think with food, this would go well with a lot of stuff. Okay, well, and would, would really fl- All the stuff that we talked about before. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. I think it would flow into the food really nicely because it doesn't have as... It's, the first one, again, like we were talking about, is kind of sharp. It had mm-hmm. a lot of like... It was kind of still and- too young. Mm-hmm. This one is smoother. It still has some room to go to get smooth. Uh, but I think it would go really nicely with a whole bunch of foods like the ones we talked about. Hmm. The pasta with tomato sauce and and spaghetti and meatballs and lasagna and a big fat pizza with meat on it and all that kind of stuff. I think it would just go great. Steak. I think it would go great with a steak. Mm. Great with a burger. Steak great. and potatoes. Oh, yeah. It would go great. I think it would be excellent. Or polenta. Steak mm. and polenta. I'm not a big polenta <laughs> fan, but what do you think? I mean, it's nice. It's Again, it's not really what I typically drink, but... Yeah. And I think going back to what I said, I, I do think I prefer the first one yeah. over this, even though it's young tasting. It does have a little bit more of that sharpness, but this is, I'm just not sure that it, I, I'm not that I wouldn't finish it. I'm no, not no, I would definitely it. drink this. You're, yeah. You wouldn't buy it. Not going to buy so it. So you're going to give I'm this gonna, one away. I'm going to give this one a six also. Do you want to change your rating on the and first gonna one? And I'm going to give, yes. I think I'm going to bump that up to a seven. Yeah. I, I'm actually going to do the same thing. I'm going to bump my first one up to an eight. I'm going to give this wow. one a seven. This one's solid. I would drink this. I would buy it. Oh, it's a good, good. wine. That's I good. wasn't, no, I wasn't so sure when we first opened it up because I was like, it's a little funky. But, you know, sometimes these wines, especially as they age, they can have a little funk on them and that's okay. It doesn't mean they're oxidized. You really will know if a wine is oxidized because it will smell like... A wet basement. But Ooh. this one had a little bit... It's okay to have some earth, some mushroomy smell, some must on it. But you just don't want that to be like all you... You don't want to taste like you're licking a concrete floor that has water damage. Oh, That's what man. you don't... You don't yeah. want that. No. By the way. Really? Just, just really? in case you didn't know. Wait. Are that's, you, oh, that's not, not a good a, thing? It's not a flavor. You should go for it. Oh. So okay. you don't have to settle. You don't have to settle for that. Okay. If you open up okay. a bottle of wine and that's what you get, stop okay. and open another one. Okay. Okay. I think we should take a break and try our next wine. Okay. Okay. We are back and we're ready to try our last wine. This is the Villa Doria Brico Magno Lange Nebbiolo, also from Piedmont, Italy. The producer, I think, is Villa Doria. This is a 2018. So again, it's just kind of getting into the pocket. It might be still a little young, but it's getting in the pocket. This Carmela was 19 dollars and 99 cents Whoa. wine.com so right on the cusp there 13.3 percent alcohol so you know it's funny in our last episode we were doing that white wine some of the white wines had more alcohol than this but this is a lot 
It's not thirteen point three is not for a red wine. No, not, the other is oh. for fourteen. This is actually kind of low for a for a Nebbiolo. A hundred percent Nebbiolo, and James Suckling gave it again a ninety. Yes, he did. Thank you, what? James. What? Okay, mix it up a little bit. What What are you smelling on this one? Well, hmm, it's pretty similar to the first one. I feel like it is. Yeah, it's, it's definitely. I, but I am. I'm getting. I'm getting a little bit of that wood and a little bit of tobacco. I'm getting a little bit of that tar and tobacco smell, mm-hmm. but cherries. Mm-hmm. I'm getting cherries for sure. More so, I think. I too. think more than the first one. This one has a nice, rich cherry smell. Mm-hmm. And as mm-hmm. far as color, this is kind of like in between the two. It's a little, it's darker, definitely darker. The first one had almost a pinot color. Yes. This the the second one had more of almost browning out a little bit. And this one's just a rich kind of nice red. Does purple. this remind you of, of a t- like more of a? This barola? is a little bit more typical. The look of it. The okay. look, and it's really pretty mm. i think it's great I'm, are you getting any rose i'm getting rose on this one this is the Not first one this. i feel like i'm getting some rose on your rose on you're getting your rose i'm, getting on. My rose, I'm really smelling <laughs> flowers on this one mm. and licorice yeah i'm getting a little bit of licorice but flowers i'm getting like a flowery mm. kind of smell on it like a rosy kind of smell so it's perfumey to, to you. But not but not, not perfume. You know, like perfumey like can be... Like a fresh rose? Yeah, yeah, yeah. More Perf- fresh petals? Yeah, because yeah, perfumey can kind of be alcoholy. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't feel like it's perfumey. I feel like it's fresh flower. Hmm. Really pretty. Okay, well, let's um, let's try it. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. You like it. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah that's it's, good. Yeah, it is better. That, that's, that is like... This one's mm. in the pocket, man. This one's What's in the, the year pocket. again? 2018. Oh. I think this is a nice wine. This You're is a happy. nice wine. You're, yeah. Mm, what's this is what's in the setting pocket. it apart? It's smooth. It's smoother than the other two. It's smoother than the first one. It's got more. It's, you're getting fruit right up front. You're yeah. getting that kind of cherry or plum taste right up front. It's a, it has it's it, still tannin. It's tannin and acid, but it's not sharp mm. like the first one was. It's smoother, mm-hmm. but it's it's got a richness, but also that sort of like again to me the I, I always say this and I don't know how to express it any better. The Cabernets, California Cabernets, they're fruit bombs. They like punch you in the face with flavor. This one is more elegant. It's got more like. Depth it's and character. More it's more subtle. subtle. Yeah. It's you know. It's, it's not, not the guy who's trying to hit on you that you're like, <laughs> you're exactly. like buddy. Exactly. Take, you know. It's take more it like, easy. Take your time. It's more like the this charming. It's charming. Time. Charming. Oh, okay. this, this is, is a charming. Courting. One. This one's this courting. One, this one's, you. one's more interesting. Yeah. You know, like if you just want to have sex, wow. you just go for the Cabernet. For the- <laughs> but if you want to have a relationship, you go, go for, for the Nebbiolo. See, I like that. I'm getting it. I'm I'm understanding this a lot better. I'm really it is. this is the this is the courting. This guy's yeah. this one's courting you, huh? The more I smell it, the more I'm smelling rose. Huh? I really am. Who's Rose? Oh. <laughs> I wanted to say, I'm on top of the world. <laughs> rose, you know, from yes. that was the character. Okay. This uh, is a really nice wine. Mm. Oh my god. Oh my God! I'm about to go crazy. This is a really nice one. The delivery coming. <sighs> this is a good one. Oh, this is good, a really good one. Good. What do you think? My dad would prefer. I think he'd like it, but I think he'd be like, "It's not a Buono." He would never talk like that. Wait, wait. I think he would just say, "It's good." I think Have, he'd would enjoy. Would you serve it. this to my dad? Oh, for sure. Oh, this one, for sure. Yeah, he would enjoy it, but he would be like, "Oh, but the, I've got this Barolo in the basement that's been aging for 47 <laughs> years." You know, like, and then he'd be like, mm-hmm. and, and I'd be, be like, like womp, womp. I'm like, Dad, it's 20 bucks. It's 20 bucks. He'd be like, oh, you know, ho, ho, ho. no, he's not French. Uh, anyway. Um, no, he wouldn't sound like that. No, at all. he would not. No, no. Okay. Uh, I don't even say a word there. Um, <laughs> what uh, any food? I think the same foods we've been talking yes, about. Yes, it's I, definitely that red meat, rich foods. But it's gonna- also pizza. Like Italian foods, a lot of well, Italian for foods. Sure, like spaghetti with marinara. What are they sauce. eating up in Piedmont? Uh, I don't Pesto? know. I, you know, I've never been. I've never been, so I don't. Know. I guess that means I haven't either. But uh, I don't think uh, we should ask your parents because they've been there. But I, I think it's they French. Have? Yeah, yeah. Your parents they went through Piedmont. They went and visited Barolo and they v- visited areas. Oh God, I don't yeah, even should, remember that. Hmm. I think there's some French influence there. I think there is like oh. more, more like maybe more creamy sauces and those kinds yeah, of things. Yeah, that's there what too. I'm thinking. Yeah. Okay. yeah, which would be delicious. Oh, it would be great with something yes. like this. It this would is cut a, right through it. It would just. Is, Oh, yeah. Fatty mm. kind of sauces mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. This is a delicious wine. Oh, wow. I'm super happy about it. That is so good. What rating are you going to give it? 
as I take another sip. It's I'm pretty good. You're kind of liking it too. I'm enjoying it. I'm going to give it an eight. And that's because I'm not going higher because it's just not my style, but I'm enjoying it. And I will buy it for you. How about that? Mm-hmm. I mean, an eight's a pretty good rating for me. Oh, shit. I'm oh, really struggling wow. here. I'm really struggling here. It's a minimum of nine. Oh, my. Oh, my god! But I might give it a 10. Really? It's so good. What's making this a 10? It's just so good. It's so smooth. It's okay. got all those classic, like, flavor profiles. Mm-hmm. The other thing, too, is it's not a Barolo. Okay, so- It's like, affordable. It's hitting all the marks. That's what I'm saying. That's exactly what I was going to say. So, it's not a Barolo. It's not going to, like, knock your full-on socks off like a, like a great Barolo would- but for 20 bucks, right. this right. is a very, very good wine. Right. So for I am the value like and super high value to yeah. price. So mm-hmm. I'm going to give it a nine, but I probably could give it a 10. Oh, it's so good. Hey, okay. that is so good. Well, yeah. that is true. Sometimes you do have to look at that, you know, the worth of the wine. Yeah. And measure that oh, against totally. It, you know, you know? We, we did that. We'll do some more of them, the QPR, the high QPR Pinot mm-hmm, Noir. Mm-hmm. But that's exactly it. Like compared to what you're paying, what's the quality? Exactly. So you got to think about it from that perspective. Totally. Mm. Okay. Which one of these would you finish tonight? Well, I think, I think we're, we're going to be fighting over yeah. this last yeah. one. This is a really nice wine. Okay. Let's talk about taste profiles expected from a Nebbiola wine. Okay. The general ones are cherry, rose, leather, Anise and clay pot. Mm. So as we're getting some of that mm-hmm, earth mm-hmm. from Longay, black cherry, spice cake, tar, rose, licorice, and carob. Okay. Okay. Carob. Ah. Ca- oh, yeah. Carob. Yeah. Well, the, it's chocolate. Yeah, well, it's Similar. kind of chocolatey. Yeah. yeah. Kajiala. The champion wine seller said strawberry. I totally get that. And cherry aromas, minerality, no, roots, notes of rose petals and earth. Mm-hmm. And then Tacoma wine merchants also said green tea leaves. Hmm. Okay. Uh, La Sacristia. James Suckling said fresh strawberries. A lot of strawberry of hmm, these yeah. guys. Mm-hmm. Orange rind and citrus. Oh. I don't. Orange rind and citrus. I didn't get that. And that was for this. Yeah. The second one. Sacristia. He's weird. Yeah. Hmm. He is really weird. I didn't get any of that. Wow. Medium body, fine wow. and silky tan and a fruity finish. I, he's off. I just don't believe. What was he drinking? I don't know. I, I feel think like he, he had drunk. a rosé. Maybe okay. he was drunk. Maybe he had a rosé of La Sacristia. Mm. Okay. And then the Villador Brico, uh, the winery says violet, hmm, rose, oh. vanilla, and cocoa aromas. Okay. Um, let's see. Oak flavors and tannins are beautifully balanced. I agree with that. Mm. James Suckling, here's what he said. Interesting nose with almost jammy strawberries together with orange rind and a hint of seashell. Wow. Where's he getting the orange? More like sour cherries on the palate. Well, I guess, yeah. A savory finish. Tasty, if a little rough at the edges. Whatever. I just don't, sometimes I just don't even think he's tasting the same wine. Wow, the orange though, that and seashell. Yeah, I don't so know. So he's getting a little bit of that seawater, like I guess, but I don't think it had that. Or, no? I don't no, think no. it had, it had some mineral, I will say it has some mineral, minerality yeah, to but it. I don't, I, hmm, like I think stone. he's trying to be it had fancy. some stone. I agree, it has some stone on it. Yeah. Which comes probably from the soil, the terroir. Yeah. Right? But I, you know, look, I think classic, the classic Nebbiolo, the black cherry, the tar, the rose, the licorice, we were getting those mm-hmm, for sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. I should say, Carmela, what? were you happy with this wine adventure to Italy? Oh, I loved it. Even though it was red wine? Yeah, no, I, I, you were okay with it's it. important for me because I don't drink you, these you, very often. You need to be exposed to red wine. Exactly. Yeah, you're Yikes. Right. Exposed oh. to red Expose wine. Expose yourself to red wine, <laughs> wow. please. Yes. Okay. Tonight, later, expose yourself <laughs> to red wine. Okay. As always, we want to thank you so very much for listening to us. We are the Wine Pair Podcast. And while you're thinking about it, we think you should subscribe and then give us a nice rating and review. And we'd also love to hear from you so you can reach out to us on our website, which is thewinepairpodcast.com. And you can email us at joe at the wine pair podcast.com you can follow us on instagram you can follow us on counter social you can dm us and tell us wines you want us to taste or things you want us to know or if you've ever been to piedmont and what kind of food they have there or if you watch the white lotus and what you think about do you prefer the first season or the second season we'd really like to know and, and if you like are disturbed about, after watching yeah that. if it's like, hard for you to go to sleep or just <laughs> like, and we had a big long talk afterwards about a plot hole and anyway right right uh, but anyway and if you're never going on a yacht again uh, i'm never going on a yacht for the first time how about that <laughs> all right so thank you for listening to us and we'll see you next time and as we like to say life is a short Wow. So sa stop a drinking the shitty wine. And the bye. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Arrivederci. Ciao. I always think too much. I always drink too much. I always drink too much.
Bye.